All right, part number two. All right, we left off at cations and anions. So diagram and ionization of elements. All right, and then in your notes I had down, we got the sodium. And then what he's going to do is he's going to lose some electrons. So we end up with this Na with a plus one. And I'll bring this up instead of having to write it. All right, so I got an Na, an Na plus one, and plus one electron. So there's one electron that's floating around, and it can go do something. It can go be taken on by something else. And when it does that, we're going to end up with this Na that's got a positive one. Or we can have aluminum. Aluminum is going to end up in a plus three. And he's going to have three electrons floating around going, man, we want to find somewhere. I don't like this. And they want to go off and become somewhere else. We're going to end up with this Al with a positive three. Right? These charges I just showed you aren't anything new. Right? I already said way back when that these guys over here have one valence electron. In the ionic chapter, we talked about they have a plus one. These guys have a plus two. These guys have plus twos. These guys have a plus, oh, look, there's aluminum. He's got a plus three. And yep, he has a plus three. Okay. So again, it's, it, this is not really something new that I'm teaching you. It's just some deeper pieces into this concept of ionic charges. So an ionic bond, what happens in an ionic bond, the forces of attraction that bind oppositely charged ions together. So we get a cation and an anion, a positive and a negative, and they go boom, and they, they get attracted to each other because they're oppositely charged, kind of like magnets. Magnets are positive, negative ends, and those parts are attracted to each other. Right? But why do they end up with positive and negative? It's all because of that exchange of electrons. One of them gives up an electron. One of them gains that electron, grabs hold of it. When you get that exchange, then all of a sudden we end up with positive and negative charges. So ionic compounds are formed. They are electrically neutral but they're held together by electrostatic forces. Oh my goodness, we're gonna look at that in a moment. But it's that whole idea that we got this positive cation, we got this negative anion, because of their opposite charge, they're held together. But because they're uh, being held together, they overall, this thing that's being held together has no charge, but inside they have charges that are holding them together. But it doesn't have a charge overall because it cancels out all the charges. Now, we call anything that's an ionic compound, we call it a salt. I, I always hate trying to teach this because when I say the word salt, what do we always think of? Table salt, the stuff we put on French fries. Which, yep, table salt is a salt by chemistry definition. Why? Because it's made up of positive sodium, negative chlorine. They track to each other. We make a salt. Now, the unfortunate piece is in, in our society, we call that salt, which it, yep, it is a salt by chemistry definition. And chemistry definition is a positive and negative being attracted. But anything that's a positive and negative is a salt. So if I had magnesium and iodine, positive, negative, they go together, it's a salt. I'm not saying that you can put it on your french fries, but by chemistry definition, it's a salt because it's a positive and a negative. All right, so let's diagram um, sodium chloride and what actually happens to him. So if I have sodium, he's in the very first group. So this sodium has one valence electron. Okay. Chlorine, he's in the one that's got seven. So he's in a seven. I'm going to put this as X's for him. One, two, three, four. There's four of them. Here's five, six, seven. Okay. Now what's he was looking at it, it looked like I saw an extra dot in here. Oh, okay, it's over there. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm look when I look at this, the uh, computer screen, everything's backwards. But all right, so if I look at this guy, he's got seven. Now, what you have to visualize here is that this chlorine's got a spot that's missing. He wants to have eight. Well, where's the spot missing? Right here. He's supposed to have two over there if he wants to be happy. All right. So he wants to gain another electron. Where could he gain another electron? right there, that sodium could give up this electron. And what it'll do is it'll go down here and fill in this spot right there. And now it makes this chlorine, he's all happy because he's got eight valence electrons now. Because he's got eight, because he gained one, all of a sudden makes him have a negative one charge because he's got one extra negative electron. What happened to this guy? He lost a negative electron. Now he's got more protons than he does electrons. So he's a positive one charge. 
Right. Now, what ends up happening then is these two guys are attracted to each other. A positive one, negative one, boom, they get pulled together and it makes sodium chloride. All right, so it makes this formula NaCl. And because it's plus one, minus one, we end up with a one to one ratio of these guys. Kind of like, remember when we did the crisscross? I took positive one, negative one, and I crisscrossed these to get my formula of NaCl. All right. So it's just looking at how this goes together. When you have to diagram them, this is what I want you to diagram. I want you to make sodium has no valence electrons. Chlorine, he has his seven, but he also gained one from that sodium. And you can make them X's and dots. You can make them circles and X's. Something to indicate the differences so that they're not all the same. Right? One of them came from another atom. Right? Let's do another example of this that's in your notes. And what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to take AL and BR. So AL, he's got three of them. So we'll make it one, two, three. There's his three. And then we got BR. Well, BR's got seven. So he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, does that BR have an open spot? Yep. Just like the last chlorine, he does. So he could take one of these and put it in there. And now that BR is happy. And he's got a negative one charge. Notice that aluminum up there, he's still not happy because he's still got some other electrons hanging out. So let's fill up, let's use some more of those. We'll take another BR. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one's got an empty spot right there. So we're going to take one of these and put it there. And now it makes him happy, but he's also got a negative one charge. But still, that aluminum still got one more, doesn't he? So we'll take another BR. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's got an empty spot over here, so he's going to take this guy and put him in there. And he's got a negative one. Okay, so each one of these three BRs have a negative one charge. Well, what's the charge on the AL now? He gave up three electrons. When he gave up three electrons, he has a plus three charge. Okay. Well, because he's got a plus three, he can attract this guy, he can attract this guy, and he can attract that guy. And also we end up with this, whoop, we end up with this molecule of one aluminum with three BRs. Well, let's look at something here real quick and go back. We got AL and BR going together. If we go back to what we learned earlier in the year, AL has a plus three, BR has a negative one. If we do the crisscross method, the three goes over here, the one goes there, I end up with a formula of AL BR3. Is that not what I just came up with over here? One AL, one AL, one, two, three BRs, three BRs. Right? All that's happening here is we've got this exchange of electrons that's causing them to pull together. Right? And this is what I was talking about earlier is that this thing over here ultimately has no charge. Okay? The charges cancel out. So it's neutral. But it's made up of a three negative BRs and one positive AL that's holding it all together. That's that electrostatic charges that are holding them together. But ultimately, it has no charge overall because they cancel each other out. All right, I think, yep, that's the end of the notes on that. So, so I know in the up and coming days, what you're going to do is you're going to have to diagram some of these. And what you're going to have to do is diagram just like I have up here. So again, you give like br his seven and then the one from al looks different right so that's what i want you to show me and then show me what the charges that they end up with where this had positive three each one of these have a negative one so that's what you're gonna have to diagram when you do this um and uh to show me the ionic compounds well that concludes this set of notes we'll see you next time hopefully you did watch this video because as you notice there's a whole bunch of stuff in this discussion that wasn't written down in the notes so you had to add some stuff to your notes okay so we'll see you next time have a great day